Hi everyone, this is Mr Neil Wright here, also known as the Wax Whisperer. Thank you for joining me in my latest video. This is of a patient who attends a clinic on a, uh, I would say, every three month cycle. And the reason for that is that they have a condition called otitis externa. So otitis externa is an umbrella term given for an infection or inflammation of the outer ear canal. And... Uh, this patient's been suffering from otitis externa from uh, a very um, young age, actually, and it's something that they just have to have managed and cleaned on a regular basis. And as a result of their otitis externa, they have a chronic buildup of dead skin. So one of the symptoms are one of the, the things that can be under the otitis externa umbrella is an eczema arthritis of the ear, and the patient gets a buildup of dead skin cells, um, and they collect and they form into a plug and it includes the ear right from the entrance all the way to the patient's eardrum. And this is the patient's right ear, and believe it or not, uh, this is the better ear of the two. Uh, the patient uh, didn't actually realise that the right ear was blocked and that's because their left ear was so blocked in reference, they felt the right one was so much better than the left that they weren't aware that they were struggling from the right, but as you can see it's fully blocked. Now we've got this humongous plug of dead skin you can see it in the distance it's um, adhered itself to the eardrum and I'm trying to just tease this out I think if memory serves me correct in a moment I'm going to revert I might be wrong but I think I'm going to use an ear hook and I'm going to hook this out and I'm going to hook it out in a single large piece but at the moment I'm just slowly but surely just bringing it towards the entrance you can see uh, the endoscope now is not actually in the air it's outside of the ear and we, we're peering into the ear whilst the end gets out and the, the lateral surface of the wax plug, so the, the part that's facing us is, is fully visible. And the ear canal, we have a bendy ear canal the, uh, near the entrance, there's two bends. The first one's about a half a centimetre into the ear canal, the second is another half a centimetre beyond, and we're having to wriggle this around the bends as well. You can actually see the patient's otitis external on the canal wall, because it's a bit more it's not as pale pink as a healthy ear canal should look like, so it's a bit more red and tender. And you can actually see all the dry skin flakes there. So these, this dry skin, it just, uh, over the months, it collects into a plug. And if this plug wasn't removed on a regular basis, they could potentially suffer from a condition called keratosis obturans. So keratosis obturans when you have a buildup of dead skin, just like this gentleman, but the plug expands so much, it gets so big and it expands so much, it begins to widen the, the ear canal. And, and that's quite uh, astonishing considering that the bone um, that makes up the ear canal is called a temporal bone. It's one of the toughest bones in the body. I think the toughest bone is the femur. And in some literature, the, 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 they, they state that the temporal bone is stronger, but um, I think when I was doing a bit of an analysis of all the research available, I think the femur is slightly on top. But nonetheless, it gives you an indication that this bone is really, really strong. And this skin plug can, if it forms into a large plug and it keeps expanding, for it to start widening the ear canal and distort the shape, you can imagine how much pressure and force there is in this skin plug. So you can see there, I removed the, the plug with a hook. You've got all this bit more wetter, um, dead skin and earwax, probably this bit of earwax as well. So I'm just reversing back to the sucker because with an ear hook, this is just going to slice through. I think we just got a little speck on. We could, have, we could technically leave that. Uh, it's not going to improve the hearing. You can see the eardrum's nice and healthy. But I'm just going to hover over. If it comes away, brilliant. If not, we're not too bothered. We're not too concerned. A bit of wax in the ear is not going to... Remember, these videos are really magnified as well. So what may appear to be a large piece of wax, actually, in, in reality, it's a, a little speck. So that's the patient's right ear. Now, this is their more difficult left in. This ear is a bit more bendy and the anterior canal wall, so the front part of the ear canal, we call that the anterior canal wall, it protrudes outwards, which creates more of a, a, a twisty, bendy ear. And you will see that as we begin to remove all this dead skin and wax. Once more, you can see the colour of the ear canal. It's a bit more red, redder, a redder shade than the normal healthy pale pink colour. You can see the dead skin flakes. So again, I'm used to using the ear hook, but... This keratin here, this dead skin here, it's a bit softer. And for that reason, the hook just slices through like a hot knife through butterwood. 
Now, because of the bendy ear, it's a bit more difficult to put a Jobson horn in there. A Jobson horn, an ear correct, is also known as. It's an essentially a hollow spoon with a little angle, but it's got a greater surface area and it's a bit more rounded than the hook. A hook is slim, slim lines. When you've got a bendy ear, you can just about still get the hook into the ear safely. With a Jobson horn, it's a bit more difficult. Um, but just reverting back to the suction, I'm going to put some drops in. The suctions, we're making some headway now. You can see the lateral part of the the ear that's more or less removed but you can see it's far more tender this ear and now we're into the bony part of the ear canal this is the inner two thirds we're going to be really gentle now and we're going to be gentle all the time but more so at this stage so we can just about see some of the eardrum in the distance now and that's the blue tinge and that's the patient's eardrum so they are already hearing significantly better, but the patient themselves did report that although they feel like they're hearing much, much better, it's still not 100%. And you can see why there's still quite a lot of soft wax and keratin on this patient's ear. And this is the worst consistency. This is the consistency. I really, sh it's, it's an audiologist's nightmare. It's like a mashed potato consistency in it. It's almost like wet mud or cement on a wall. It's very hard to suction. You can't really, you can't use any other instruments to remove this as well. So I just put some sodium bicarbonate drops in. And sodium bicarbonate drops. Whenever you've got pavement otitis externa, I try to avoid drops full stop. But when you've got this consistency, and there's a lot of dead skin. Sodium bicarbonate drops is, for me at least, um, it's the the drops uh, of choice. Um, it tends to. Um, soften the skin in a way that olive oil can't. I think with, olio with the olive oil spray that I normally use, it just it's repelled against the skin. And, the, and th that makes sense because the skin uh, contains a lot of keratin and the keratin is hydrophobic. So it doesn't really do much with, when you've got dead skin. Whereas sodium bicarb, I feel, just, it makes it a bit easier to suction. Now you can see the front part of the ear canal to the left here, it's bulging outwards and it's just the anatomical ear canal and that makes it difficult to get access in this region so this is the anterior recess of the eardrum so we're having to really stretch the ear open and I'm angling the endoscope back towards almost 10 and 11 o'clock and that wouldn't be possible if you didn't stretch the ear wide open to get the angle and slowly just kissing the surface of the eardrum trying to get this mashed potato dead skin off it you can see slowly but surely it's coming away and that's the majority of the eardrum uh, now visible. And I, I believe at this stage, the patient felt that the hearing was back to normal. And again, that meant that, that by looking in the ear, and you can see that the sound can get all the way through the ear canal now, and it can um, vibrate against the eardrum. The eardrum is more or less completely fully visible. But it's just some residual dead skin. And I'm just going to spend a bit of time just to see if I can get this away for the patient. on the back part of the ear canal so I'm just angling the endoscope towards that part of the right region of the ear and again I'm just hovering over this dead skin I want to avoid the contact with the ear canal because of the consistency the chew the, I'm using a fine end sucker now um, it was getting blocked uh, quite often so I was having to come out of the ear and then block it and re-enter the ear So I'm just going back to the anterior part of the ear canal. So you can see the movements I'm making with the sucker. I'm always coming away from the ear canal. I'm kind of with those little brush strokes and you want almost want to flick the sucker against the side of the ear canal without making contact and then moving away from the canal wall into the mid part of the ear canal. And here yeah, you can see, so we're going towards the, the canal, trying to get a suction, get a, was like a, a flick of the brush and bring the sucker in and away. So if this was a bit of a firmer plug of earwax, for example, you, you would get a suction grip and it will peel away in one, in one motion, but because of the consistency, it's not. 
I mean, if this wasn't an ear and it wasn't someone's hearing at risk and the ear canal wasn't sensitive as it was, you could just go in there and start swelling and scraping around. But of course, I can't do that in, in, in someone's ear. So I'm just going to the roof of the ear canal. This part is slightly peeling away, so, but as I get towards the eardrum, it becomes soft and mushy again. You can see it detached itself. Okay, just on the roof, and I'm just going flicking downwards, so away from the canal wall itself. Again, I'm in the anterior recess. You can see how close we are to the eardrum. We can see all the blood vessels there. We can see the, the short process of the hammer bone, which is the white, it's like a ball and socket joint. You can see it just on screen about five o'clock. So that's um, the top part of the hammer bone, and it's called the short process or the lateral process of the hammer bone. And it's, as I said, it takes the shape of a ball and socket joint. It's already circling around, and it can sometimes protrude out outwards and that part of the eardrum um, becomes more visible and as does the bone. So I'm just going just put some more drops in, just trying to soften this dead skin a bit more. And we're just hit now we're in the inferior recess. So towards the eardrum, the ear canal dips down and it comes back up again and you can get a lot of collection of skin, wax, fluid in there. So again I'm just going into that region. So just a bit of a warning, I don't manage to get all of it out, so, um, but again, we're just being as meticulous as we can. I'm just angling the endoscope towards the back part of the eardrum. This is called a, this is the part of the ear that I always try and clean wherever possible because it's called a um, posterior superior quadrant, and in this so this is the the um, the the, uh, the rear end of the eardrum at the top. Um, so on a compass, we would say so that the northeast in terms of the left ear. And this part of the eardrum is susceptible to be sucked into the middle ear. If you've got a blocked eustachian tube, so if you've got a blocked eustachian tube, which is a narrow orifice that connects the back of the ear, ear canal, uh, sorry, the back of the eardrum to the back of the nose, and it's the ventilation tube. It's what we use when we, to equalise the air pressure. For example, when we're on a plane, we close our mouth, pinch our nose and blow, and we force air up our nose, up the tube to pop the eardrum back out. It's called the Valsalva manoeuvre. And if that eustachian tube is blocked, it creates a negative middle ear pressure. It basically means there's no air behind the eardrum. So the air pressure is not equalised, there's more air pressure in the atmosphere compared to the cavity behind the eardrum, the middle ear. So it creates a vacuum effect and your eardrum gets sucked in and it's the posterior superior region, so the top rear back part of the eardrum that's more susceptible to getting sucked in. And if that gets sucked in, it creates a pocket and in that pocket you can get a collection of dead skin and that skin can then get infected and it, it for, can form into what we call a cholesteatoma. So whenever I see any debris there, I always want to clear that region out, if possible, just to make sure there's no retraction of the eardrum and there's no underlying cholesterol. And fortunately here we've cleaned most of that up and there's no, um, there's no retraction. So we see the majority of the eardrum. There's still, again, some in the anteriors, but that front part there, can I hear, it's just too bendy. Is too protruding, I can't visibly gain access. Now, if I was using any other visualisation technique to examine the ear other than the endoscope, we wouldn't be able to even see that. Um, this is where an endoscope can be its own worst enemy sometimes because you can see parts of the ear that you normally wouldn't. And then kind of entices you to try and remove it. But I've decided to leave that last bit. It's not going to cause any problems with the patient. Well, I hope you enjoyed that video, guys. Take care, keep well, and speak soon. Bye.